a happy Friday, everybody. Hope you're all doing well and had a good week and are enjoying your isolation, your uh, social distancing, and whatever other things you're practicing to keep uh, COVID-19 at bay. And uh, hopefully you've been able to catch up on some of your, your YouTube videos. I've been noticing a lot more YouTube videos uh, to watch than usual, I guess because people are home and have more time on their hands to produce them. So uh, shouldn't be bored, that's for sure. There's all kinds of good programming on TV and tons of bad programming. Uh, old shows you can watch on Netflix or Prime TV or Acorn TV or whatever you happen to have. And uh, millions of YouTube videos out there to, to watch as well. So hope you're keeping yourself busy and employed or entertained in some way or another. And I'm just going to do my little part today as I usually do on Tuesdays and Fridays. And so let's get off to our normal routine. We have one shout out today and that is for Star TV. Uh, Star TV is an educational channel. It does a lot of uh, things to do with computer programs and how to use them and uh, get the most out of them. But also does some cooking videos. So the most recent cooking video was on a nice spicy spaghetti. And uh, I kind of enjoyed watching it. Well, I shouldn't say kind of. I did enjoy watching that one. So check out Star TV. All right. It's time for story time. Well, have you ever heard of an idiom? Well, we hear them all the time. It's part of our language. Let's take a look at the idiom, shall we? Idiom or idiocy. If someone is cut out to cut up, shouldn't he or she really cut it out? If a yellow dog contract is nothing but a pig in a poke, one that promises pie in the sky, can a wild strike cat be called? When a young mother puts her children down, is she tucking them into bed, or is she criticizing them? How does one explain such weird and wonderful expressions in a language as rich as English, especially to a foreigner. One does not. At least not very easily, and that, according to the guardians of our language, is part and parcel of the definition of an idiom. Nonetheless, most grammaticians and linguists do agree that idioms are one, peculiar, two, pervasive, three, approved by usage only, and four do not mean what they say. For a wallflower is certainly not found on wallpaper, nor not any more than hot dogs stick their tongues out and pant. And a wet blanket at a beach party is certainly not the kind of bed covering left too long at the tide line. Or a red herring a colorful gustatory delight. Or red tape sticky, useful, and stored on spools. How illogical they all are, and yet how drab speech would be without its sprinkling of idioms. They are the shooting star of the language, its archaeological shards, its penny poetry chants. Many idioms, of course, are now clichés, and so some purists try to weed them out. Others prefer to pull them up and examine their roots, a task at once instructive and delightful. Take, for instance, idioms that come in pairs, like kith and kin. Kith comes from Old English and refers to people you know. Kin comes from kindred, and they are relatives. Bag and baggage is army talk. Baggage refers to army property. A bag contained a soldier's personal gear. In maneuvers of war, they were moved out together, including guns, which used to be composed of locks, stocks, and barrels. The expression down and out first applied to unconscious boxers, but now is used to describe unfortunates like the alcoholic inhabitants of Skid Row. The seafaring British have provided us with many salty, if hard to fathom, idioms. When, for example, a situation is touch and go, it is like the keel of a boat that is almost, but not quite, aground. High and dry is aground with the tide out. When taken aback, 
when it's like a back-winded sail, a nautical tactic used to stop a boat in the water. Giving a wide berth to someone or something refers to the necessary practice of leaving anchor room around ships so that they may swing without striking each other. Arm argument has its own sharp-edged armamentarium of idioms. The phrase, a bone of contention, suggests dogs squabbling over a bone. But when peace is made, the contenders bury the hatchet, a ritual practiced by North American Indians. If something is humiliating, it may involve eating crow, which comes from an ancient association of the crow with unpleasantness and strife. No doubt crows are awful to eat, and so eating humble pie would be an improvement. Especially old is the idea of playing devil's advocate. When the ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical assemblies met to vote on the canonization of a new saint, a person, the devil's advocate, was selected to bring out whatever wickedness he or she could find in the candidate. Such findings, however, often turned out to be mute points. The moot, M-O-O-T, was an Anglo-Saxon assembly in which argument was as rampant as it was raucous. Some of our most overworked idioms are also the most current, teetering in a kind of verbal no-man's land between ephemeral slang and permanent cliché. To do a number probably came from vaudeville parlance, but we now go a step further and do a number on someone, meaning to deceive by action or something else. The Watergate period made its own idiom history by reviving the expression to deep six, meaning to drown something in six fathoms of water, and by popularizing shred or destroy evidence. The trickiest idioms for some newcomers to learn involved prepositions. Why should we put by money for the future, yet put up with boring visitors? Confusing, to say the least especially when we also put up guests and put up peaches. And then, too, girls are likely not only to make up their faces, but to make up tests at school after having made up excuses for missing the test in the first place. After a fight, of course, they are free to kiss and make up. Some meanings can only be deduced from context. A situation that gets down-to-earth people down at the mouth about English. It is impossible, though, not to cherish a language that is as rich in invective as English, though we no longer hurl insults with the gusto of Elizabethans. It is still possible to call someone a bonehead, fathead, hoghead, egghead, skinflint, spoilsport, turncoat, diehard, dropout, upstart, or copycat. Later, of course, one can do the obvious and curry favor, apple polish, and make up. So there you go. That's a little bit about idioms. Alrighty. Now that we've enjoyed our idioms, we can have a good groan. So are you ready for the groaner? Well, a monastery out in the country was struggling to make ends meet. And so after the brothers gathered with the abbot and discussed it, they decided to look around at the local town and see what they could do to raise money but without interfering with anyone who already had some sort of uh, livelihood in the, in the area. They didn't want to take somebody else's livelihood away from them. If you remember back quite a way ago, probably a year ago, I did a, a joke about uh, some similar monks that started a florist shop, but this isn't that one. So these monks, after talking it over, decided the best course of action and the thing that would probably do the best in the area was a fish and chip shop. And so they got all they needed to do, so they found a place in town to rent, and a few months later, they opened their fish and chip shop. And the first customer to come in was the mayor of the town. And he looked at the brother behind the counter, and with a quick wit said to the brother, Ah, you must be the fish fryer. To which the brother quickly replied, 
No, I'm the chipmunk. <laughs> there you go. There's your groaner for the day. Well, everyone, have a fantastic weekend. Hope you're able to enjoy yourself. Go out for a nice walk, get some fresh air. Uh, just make sure you social distance. If you have a yard to play in, play in your yard. Uh, dig out those old games that are gathering dust on the shelf. Maybe put together a jigsaw puzzle. But I'm sure there's something you can do to keep yourself entertained and stay healthy. Until next time on Tuesday when we get into some kind of mischief or another, take care, stay safe, and God bless.